Greetings folks, in this video I'm going to be setting up the Parasirius Air 3 flight control board with INAV on the uh, Zephyr Z2 wing. Uh, these come pre-flashed with the latest stable INAV firmware. Uh, I've just got to set it up for flying wing, um, set up my servos going the right direction and I'll do everything from scratch and show you how to do it. First thing I'm going to do is take the prop off. Uh, because we will at some stage be working with a live setup and don't want things to go wrong. In the Maiden video I set up the, the wing so that it's flying level and straight with uh, no trims in the transmitter which is the starting point you need to um, set up the flight control board. I've now got the FPV transmitter out in that side there. I've got the uh, SBUS capable X4R FR Sky receiver out in that wing there. That's all coming back to the central bay um, and I'm going to put the FPV camera on the front uh, and an HD recording camera of some sort as well. We'll get to that a bit later on. Need a USB, plug it in there, plug the board in, micro USB cable, you get some flashing lights. Now we can open iNav and click connect. Now you may need to download a, a driver of the right sort. Uh, Silicon Labs does it for Mac. You'll have to sort that out yourself. Click connect and there we go. We've got the board connected and you can see that it's properly connected because the animation on the screen is moving in the same direction. It says the accelerometer is calibrated but we probably should do that anyway. So what we do, we've got six different positions to calibrate in. Calibrate accelerometer when it's sitting on its base, then we put it over on its top, calibrate accelerometer, put it on its right side, calibrate accelerometer, put it up on the end like that, calibrate accelerometer, put it on the left side, calibrate accelerometer, and put it up on its nose, calibrate accelerometer. Alright, so now let's move down, we don't need to worry about any of them. Uh, multi -week has set up all of this sort of stuff for you. Configuration, it might find that it's on aeroplane like that, but we want flying wing, which it's already set up. Thank you very much. Uh, this shows you where you need to uh, connect your motor, or that allows for two motors. Left aileron, channel 3, right aileron, channel 4, or, or servo connection 4. Servo refresh rate, we've got fast digital servos so we can change that to 330 hertz. If you've just got analogs you have to leave that on 50 otherwise you'll stuff up your servos. Don't want to spin the motors when armed. Now I want to uh, mount this board sideways around like that. So this is where we change that angle here and what I need to do is change this to 90 degrees. We'll check that, save and reboot. Go back to setup and now with that, the board in that orientation there, that is working correctly. Everything's rotating in the right direction. All good. Okay, moving on. Failsafe. What do you want to do in the failsafe situation? You want it to return to home. That's all good. PID tuning. Uh, don't worry about that for the moment. That's already been pre-set up. Advanced tuning. Return to home. Altitude mode, you want it at least uh, exact or stay at the current. I have at least the altitude, uh, and that is uh, return to home altitude is only 10 metres. That's not enough. I want 50 metres, so that's 50. Do you want it to climb before return to home or turn then climb? I think I'll have it turn then climb. Uh, do you want it to land after return to home? No, <laughs> so never. Loiter radius 50 metres, that's good. Permanently enable air mode so that if, you, uh, if you're gliding for any, any length of time it doesn't disarm or it still gives you control over the servos. Save and reboot. Now what you can do before all of this, uh, you can go to the command line in, in, interface, type something like dump or diff, actually I'll do diff, diff, and that will bring up all the settings you have that are different to uh, default so then you can copy all of this save it into a text file and you can also you can always go back to your original settings if you need to 
All right, so now I'm ready to mount this in the plane and uh, we'll continue on a bit later on. For setup on the Tyrannus, to work in S-Bus mode, this is the X4R SB receiver. Needed on D16 mode, no inputs. Simple mixing, just channel one, 100 aileron, channel two, 100 elevator, channel three, 100 throttle. You may have to reverse them once we go to the receiver screen, we'll work that out. Uh, and then you need to set up however many mode switches you want on channel 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, whatever. With S-Bus you can have 16 channels, so uh, I only need nine, uh, four mode switches, so I, I've set up these switches here. We'll have a look at them later on. And you can set up some voice uh, commands or voice prompts, depending on which mode you have on which switch. That's up to you. And there we go, that's about it. Simple as that. So here's the flight control board now. I'm going to mount it in the equipment bay here, facing sideways like that, so that I can get the... GPS plugged in and the uh, access to the USB connection there. I have the Carbon Bird uh, BEC there, the 5 volt 3 amp, uh, really nice BEC which taps into the power cable uh, and that's sort of spliced in with the ESC. There's the ESC cable coming out there. I've got the power cable disconnected. Power's coming from the BEC. There's the signal and the ground. So that powers the flight control board. So we can plug that into uh, Q1. There's the S-Bus cable going out to the receiver, so I can plug that in. There's the left elevon, so that will go into Q3. There's the right elevon, so that comes around and goes into Q4. There's the GPS that will plug in uh, down here. There we go, that's in. So now the flight control board will sit like that somehow. And I think what I'll do is I'll uh, double sided tape onto that bit of core plus and sort of put that down in there, tape it down into position so that I can pull it out if I have to. Now, if I plug this in, should power it up and connect to the transmitter, hopefully. All right, so if we move the plane, that should be working now. That is reversed, so I've got it the wrong way around. So I'll try minus 90 degrees. Now we're going the right way. So let's have a look at receiver. Alright, so in TAR I want AETR. Does that do it? There we go. I'll save that. That's a bit better. Yep, okay. So now what we've got to do is set up so that with the stick moving to the right, the roll moves to the right, left is left. Back is down and forward is up. Throttle is working in the correct direction. At the moment we don't bother about control surface movements. We can change that later on to get them right in the servos tab. In the sub trims on the radio, now we can set up the midpoint so that it matches up with the midpoint on the screen there. We want 1500 in the middle, that's pretty right there. And the that's going down to 987, we want that to be 1000. So trim that up to 1000. That's good, and we want it to go 2000, so it's going to 211. So we'll bring that down to 2000, there we go. So we do that for roll pitch. We don't worry about yaw, because we haven't got yaw uh, and throttle. This just means that the flight control board understands what the radio limits are. So now we can work out the directions of throw of the control surfaces. So if they're going in the wrong direction, which they are, we need to reverse that in the servo screen. 
Now this is where you can get into trouble. You can reverse the throttle without knowing what you're doing. Let's do servo 4. Save that. Now they're going the right way. Now everything's going the right way. Okay, to set up the modes, uh, you, there are all these different sorts of modes you can choose. You can combine them as well. You choose the switch you're going to use, and remember I have uh, my arming switch on channel 5. So you choose channel 5 for arm. Choose the range that captures where the switch position is meant to be. And you just use these sliders. And any of the modes you want to set up, you set it up that way. Uh, so for example, angle, I've got angle and horizon I've got on switch A, which I've assigned to channel 6. Uh, and in the full back position, hold. I've got angle mode and altitude hold. Horizon middle mode. middle position I've got horizon mode. Fr uh, a back position is just no mode basically. I like to have, while well, you're arming on a switch, on a separate switch by itself, angle and horizon modes on another switch. Uh, altitude hold, I've got that also on that same switch so that it, that activates when I've got angle and horizon mode selected. I might include horizon mode, which is the centre part of that switch. Position hold is uh, like, it'll, it'll loiter, circle around uh, at the radius that you selected. So I've got that on channel, on channel 7, which is my SC switch. I've also got altitude hold for that as well, so when I click switch C into the middle position I get position hold so it'll circle and altitude hold so it'll stay at the altitude. When the switch was switched I've returned to home on that same C switch. I have a pass through mode on channel 8 which is my D switch and launch assist as well. So that's modes. A very important thing we need to do is to plug these parameters into the command line interface. Uh, so I'll pull up INAV, command line interface. Uh, so we copy set max angle inclination roll 600. That gives you more roll angle than default. Copy, paste it there, hit return, and continue on for pitch, paste, hit return. This one's very important. Set small angle equals 180. That means you can arm the plane no matter what angle it's sitting at and fail safe throttle low delay that stops it going into fail safe when you don't want it to I think something like that anyway these are all recommended on the wiki and uh, to make your wing fly properly you need to put them in I've also added a micro OSD uh, this is available on multi wii copter and there's a, a good wiring diagram to show how to connect that up uh, so on the input side this just goes in between the camera and the video transmitter. On the output side we have uh, power and ground and they just plug into a spare power on the flight control board and a spare ground pin and then there's the uh, green and yellow wires which plug into M5 and M6 to overlay the OSD. Now it's important to remember that this UART or this input is shared with the USB input so if you're going to do some configuration you have to unplug the uh, OSD because they can't do it at the same time. So I'll connect up the camera and the transmitter and there we go we've got it on the screen so you can see the on-screen display how I've got it set up I've got it set up quite minimally with less bars in the middle and no voltage telemetry because I've got the voltage coming from the Eagle 2 to configure the on-screen display, you can either buy the connector from Multiweek Opta if, and use the app to do it on your computer, uh, or you can do a lot of it using your transmitter. And the way to do it is have the board disarmed. You go half throttle, your right, and full pitch, and you can see the menu comes up. I couldn't get this menu to come up for ages, and that's because I didn't have any your input programmed in. It's a wing, so you don't need your input, but you do need your input to bring the OSD menu up. So you have to put in that 100 rudder line in uh, so that you do actually get some your input. So now we can zip from page to page using the your stick. 
let's go have a look at a few other things you can set up your PIDs which is pretty amazing and you can set up your rates expo TPA breakpoint and your expo not that we need your expo choose what you want to display on the screen this is all awesome anyway you can do all the setting up using your transmitter out in the field and save and exit so that's the MW OSD or whatever OSD it is, uh, micro OSD, I'm not too sure what it's called anyway, all the details are on the multi copter site. So now I can check, controls are going in the correct direction, compensation is going in the correct direction, and that's it, we're ready to rock and roll.